KCAU 9 Sports. Briar Cliff and Morningside men's and women's basketball meeting tonight for the first time. And Jake is with us tonight live from Newman Flanagan Center on the Briarcliff campus with a look at this year's highly anticipated matchup. Jake? Hey, Tim and Sophie. Yeah, I'm just hanging out with a couple of my new best friends down here at the oh, Newman Flanagan God. Center. Big time matchups on the docket this evening as Morningside travels to Briarcliff for round one of this GPAC showdown. Now let's go ahead and start with the GPAC women, specifically the number one team in the standings, those Morningside ladies. And Morningside comes into tonight's matchup having won five straight, including all four of their conference games. And rather than relying on one or two key pieces for scoring, Morningside has four players averaging nine or more points per game, including three in double figures. And is coming off a game against Midland where both Sophia Peppers and Sierra Mitchell scored over 20. Basically what I'm saying is to stop Morningside this year, it takes a team effort. Maybe in the last couple of years they always had to key on one or two people and could stop us. And now I think we're a little more balanced that we have we have several people that can score and it makes things a lot easier as a coach because you can just kind of let things flow and, and you really don't have to direct plays at certain people. You can just let them play together and get good shots. That definitely helps take some pressure off of me and then they have to focus on everybody, which opens more things up to me and I can just let the game come to me instead of having to, you know, try to do more things on my own. So it's definitely I I mean this year's been it's been really Awesome. On the other side of this matchup, the Briarcliff women currently sit number two in the GPAC standings at five and one. And their only loss coming two games ago in a surprise upset to previously winless Northwestern. The Chargers quickly put people's worries of a backslide to bed, though, blowing number 11 Concordia out of the building for much of their last game. And as people begin to wonder, is Briarcliff for real? Well, Head coach Britta Hand says for them, it's not even a question. We focus on us and what we do well, and we tend to have a little something special for each team. We try to keep teams on their toes with what we're doing, you know, change up our defense, change up maybe what we're going to give them offensively to look at. So try to keep them guessing about what we're in, what we're going to do, and, you know, make them play to our level is what I always say. We don't want to play to their level. We want to make them match our tempo and our speed. As for the men's matchup, Morningside came in with plenty of preseason hype and looked to be pretty right as they've started off with a 7-1 record, but although, or excuse me, 8-1. As for the Briar Cliff men, though, they've started 4-5, four, four but coming off a pretty big win over Concordia, who was previously unbeaten going into Saturday's contest. And how do the Chargers beat them, you may ask? Well, pretty simple. They were able to knock down their threes, and that's going to get you a lot of wins for plenty of teams as, excuse me, we're talking here about the Chargers, and man, what an effort they've been able to give these last couple of games as really able to hit 18 of 36 triples last game, and they're looking to keep it rolling this week, even though it's not so much luck that's getting these shots, it's all the other things around it. But I think it really started on the defensive end. I think that we forced a ton of turnovers and that led to open shots and helped us get our get our run going and playing really well. Guys are really settling in to, you know, not being in such a hurry all the time to, to shoot and, and getting some better looks. And it seems like this group, when one guy or two guys really start get going, it becomes contagious and, and everybody kind of feels good about shooting a three. And when we do that, obviously everything else opens up. As you can imagine, Morningside's number one priority tonight is going to be slowing down those three balls. Fortunately, the Mustangs' biggest strength is Briarcliff's biggest weakness, their size. Senior post Trey Brown is the reigning GPAC Player of the Week, scoring 17 per night and pulling in nearly 10 boards as well. So between their advantage in size and trying to keep in front of the Chargers shooters, Morningside pretty excited for tonight's matchup. We're really excited for this matchup. Uh, last year, they took one from us at their place, and uh, we're just up for it. And yeah, they can shoot lights out, but 
if we can play our defense and control what we want to control, I think we'll be all right. When, when they get on a roll like that, they've got so many guys on the floor that can knock shots down. Um, we, we can't overhelp on the penetrations. We, we've got to stay between our man and the basket and just contest shots and only give them one attempt at it. If we're fortunate enough that they're able to miss a shot, we've got to get the rebound. We can't give them second chances because they're definitely going to score on that one. The women's game currently ongoing here as we're in the second corner with Briar Cliff up 11 came out and blitzed Morningside. So be sure to tune in tonight at 10. We'll have highlights from this game, the men's game, the Cyhawk game, as well as the Nebraska Big Ten ACC challenge. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't loosen up some of my friends around here. They're a little stiff. Tim and Sophie, I'll send it back to you. Yeah, it's a quiet crowd you're with tonight, Jake. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and we check in for one final look at the